right, this is the way it's done. That's called the bullseye, an inch and a half. Let's go down and talk about the kingdom. Okay, here we are in the office now. Call the least in the kingdom of heaven. Do you want to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven? Do you want people to walk by and say, mm -mm, he's one of the least here. Now, who is the least in the kingdom of heaven? That's what we're going to look at in the scriptures. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And they won't just be the least. He'll be called the least. In other words, he'll be designated as one of the lesser ones there. Now, does that sound like heaven to you? Well, it's not. It's the kingdom of heaven, which is different from the kingdom of God. Let's look at that. So we're going to go to the inspired and preserved word of God. In our English language, it is the one that's based on the oldest and best manuscripts, sometimes called the King James Version or the Authorized Version. Open it up to Matthew 5.13. Ye are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. Now, this is another one of those passages that if he was talking about the church, the kingdom of God, we'd be in bad shape. Because it would be saying that if we lose our saltiness as a Christian, our righteousness and ability to influence the world, then God's just going to cast us out so men trot us underfoot. But it's talking about the kingdom of heaven. In other words, if you think about Israel at the time this was written, he's saying to the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel is the salt of the earth. And if Israel does not keep its saltiness, then in 70 AD, God's going to cast it out and the Romans are going to trot it underfoot, which actually happened. Ye are the light of the world. A city. Now, I'm not a city, but Jerusalem was a city. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it giveth life unto all that are in the house. Let your light, and that's the light of Israel, of the city of Jerusalem, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, if you don't understand the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, then this passage is teaching that as a Christian, you're still under all of the law of God. And if you break a single one of them, you're in violation, you're a lawbreaker. For very last I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So according to that, the law abides forever. And there's churches that believe that, like the Seventh-day Adventists and uh, the uh, Judaizing churches who <laughs> make this pitiful show of keeping the law. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, all the commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Not in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's 613 commandments in the Torah, in the Old Testament, 613. I didn't count those up. The Jews for centuries have made that point. Now, here is just one of those 613 that you are supposed to keep if you keep all the law. Now, if you, what are the least commandments? This is one of the less commandments, I guess. You won't go to hell for breaking it. You just get your face spit in. And you get your, <laughs> let's read it. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child. So two brothers live in the same community or the same town. The wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. So this woman whose husband died, <clears throat> she's not, she's commanded not to marry somebody outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. So the commandment is if your brother dies and you're married and you've got some kids, you're to take your brother's wife in and so it becomes a second wife and produce children under her. 
And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of the brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. So it's important in the kingdom of heaven in Israel to perpetuate the, the name and the property of every single individual. So if a man died before he had children, then the brother would impregnate his wife and the children born would be in his name, not the, not the man, but the one who died. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate under the elders. Now in the church, there's no gate and there's no elders to go to and say, my husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of this city shall call him and speak unto him, and he shall stand to it and say, I like not to take her. He, he said, I don't want her. My wife would go nuts if I took a second one. Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and shall loose his shoes from off his feet. So the woman comes and unties his shoes. And she stands up and spits in his face because he's breaking one of the least commandments. And shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that hath his shoe loosed. So when people pass by, it was such a terrible thing that he did to not produce children in his brother's name, to let his name die out, that when people saw him, they said, that's him that's had his shoe loosed. <laughs> he had his shoe loose, got his face spit in. Why? Because he wouldn't take his brother's wife like the Bible says he's supposed to. He broke one of the commandments. Oh, he'll be the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, if you don't know the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, you're not going to understand the Bible. You're not going to understand the Old Testament. You're not going to understand the New Testament especially the New Testament. Uh, that's why I wrote that book, Eight Kingdoms, to clarify it. <laughs> this book, Eight Kingdoms, is exhaustive, and it deals with every time the word kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, or kingdom is used anywhere in the Bible, and gives clear explanation as to the difference between the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. I just read that for the first time in years. Uh, again, this morning, a portion of it where we're dealing with, and I'm amazed how simple it is. I, I, I remember it as being rather complex, but it's extremely simple, extremely easy to follow, step by step, and you'll get the idea. Okay, let's go on. Now, here's another commandment. No loans with interest. Did you know it's a sin? You're breaking the commandment of God to borrow money on interest or loan money to a brother for interest. And furthermore, according to the commandments, after seven years, whatever loan has been made is, is abolished. It, it terminates, it expires. It's only good for seven years. So if you loan someone just some gold or silver, no interest, just loan it over to them. If they don't get around to paying it back after seven years, they don't owe you any more money. The loan is forgiven. But in the kingdom of heaven, if someone borrows from you and you give it to them, you're not to go and ask them for it back again. Jesus even reminded us of that. Just let them keep it. It's okay. That's the kingdom of heaven. And if you break one of those commandments like that, you'd be called the least. Do you have a credit card? Do you pay interest? Do you have a business? Do you loan out? You'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven. If this applied to you as a Christian, which it does not. So <laughs> you need to learn the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. All right, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I'm going to show you this. What we need is the righteousness of God on us. You're not going to get to heaven by keeping the law. This righteousness of God is unto all and upon all them that believe. Not by keeping any commandments. Read the book of Galatians. I am not under any single one of those 633 laws. So there's a way to heaven, and it's not by keeping laws. It's by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The chasm of sin and death is spanned by that man, Christ Jesus, who died, buried, and raised again. And it's a simple path for any sinner to get into God's favor. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. I'm forgiven. I celebrate that I'm forgiven. 
if you're forgiven, <laughs> then you have a lot of joy in your heart and a lot of peace and you need to share it with other people. Okay, I think I'm going to go fishing today. I'm going to go out and get my boat hooked up. be my first time this year. Uh, it's still a bit chilly, but to tell me the white bass are biting down on the Tennessee River. So here I go. Well, I told you I was going fishing. These are called white bass, and they come out of the Tennessee River, Knucky Lake. Give you an idea of what they look like right there. Nice and fat and thick. Gonna make delicious dinner today. <laughs>